morning and welcome to Coffee with Pastor. This is Thursday morning, November the 30th. This is the last day of November. Tomorrow we start December. What? Just plain unbelievable. I have my hot cup of coffee right here and I have my copy of the Word of God open to the book of Matthew and chapter 23. The book of Matthew chapter 23 and again good morning to you. Welcome to Coffee with Pastor and again I'm assuming you are opening up God's Word and that you are going to follow along with us as we read that in just a few moments. Turning our attention while you're opening your Bibles, we're going to turn our attention to the bad dad joke. Why did the small pepper put on a sweater? Why did the small pepper put on a sweater? He was a little chilly. Come on. Okay. Hopefully we got a little bit of a chuckle out of that. But again, it is a beautiful, beautiful day. Looking forward to a wonderful day from start to finish. And I trust you are as well as we get started today. Let me just encourage you. Just focus on today on being faithful to the Almighty, and we'll see what God will do in and through His people. As we strive to be faithful, God will work in and through us. It is about the nine o'clock hour, and so we're going to go ahead, bow our heads, bow our hearts before our Heavenly Father. Let's bow. Let's pray together. Good morning, Lord. And what a joy it is to be in your presence, knowing that we can come boldly before your throne, knowing that we can bring our cares and our concerns to you any time, night or day. Thank you that you hear us, you listen to us, and Father, that you answer us. Certainly not because we deserve any of this. We don't. But purely because of your grace. Thank you. Thank you for being so good. Thank you for being so great. And Father, as we come before your throne, we pray that we would apply these truths to our lives that we would strive to be faithful to you, to serve you, to seek your honor and your glory. Certainly nothing, nothing else matters. And so, Father, we come before you and as we seek to be faithful. Father, bless us. Continue to meet our needs. Continue to give us those things that you deem best for us. And Father, keep our eyes focused upon you. We're literally every good gift and every perfect gift comes from your hand. All of the circumstances that we face today are already in your hands. You already know what is going to happen. You already know how you would deem it best for your people to respond. And so, Father, we ask that you would use us as you see fit. Use us according to your will. Only may our lives count for eternity. Father, it is indeed our desire to be all that we can be. And Lord, as we open up your word, that your spirit would speak through your word, that your spirit would teach us, would convict us, would shape us, mold us, conform us into the image of our dear Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your goodness. We ask these things in Christ's wonderful and holy name. 
Amen. We are in Matthew chapter 23. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say, and do not. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments, and love the uppermost rooms at the feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues, and greetings in the marketplace, in the markets, and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father, which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye can pass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Woe unto you, ye blind guides, which say, Whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. Ye fools and blind, for whether is greater, the gold or the temple that sanctifieth the gold? And whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing. But whosoever sweareth by the gift that is upon it, he is guilty. Ye fools and blind, for whether is greater the gift or the altar that sanctifieth the gift? Whoso therefore shall swear by the altar sweareth by it, and by all things thereon. And whoso shall swear by the temple sweareth by it, and by him that dwelleth therein. And he that shall swear by heaven sweareth by the throne of God and by him that sitteth thereon. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omit omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Ye blind guides, which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but within, full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within, ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! 
because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers. How can ye escape the damnation of hell? Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them ye sh shall ye scourge in the synagogues and persecute them from city to city that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, the son of Barachias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Thou that killest the prophets and stoneth them that which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh. In the name of the Lord. And may God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Can I just remind you? The Pharisees and the scribes were amongst the most righteous, at least outwardly righteous people in all the land of Israel. And Jesus calls them hypocrites. He calls them vipers. He calls them children of hell. Remember, it's possible to be very religious and to know a lot of religious things and still be lost. It's possible to partake in and perhaps even lead religious services and still be lost. I can't tell you how important it is. Not that you say a prayer, but that you have a loving, personal, intimate relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Beloved, and if you do, it is for us to be faithful. To show the world what real Christianity is all about. And how it can change a life. Be faithful. And never allow yourself to become someone else's excuse for turning away from the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Beloved, remember, God loves you very, very deeply. And we do as well. Until tomorrow, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.